Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Connolly. Hello, Donna Fermalino. And welcome to this year. I've got a few songs, a few stories for you. And it's nice to be back in Dunfermline and he'll lied. <laughs> See, it's lovely to be here. <laughs> Aye. I've got my finger stuck in my leotard. <laughs> they don't give you any pockets. I'll tell you another thing. When I first got this leotard, I couldn't work out how you get into it. You go in through the neck, it's the most weird experience. It's like putting your trousers on out of your head, you know? So... <laughs> Aye. So, here we go. I have some new material, I have some old material. And uh, some stolen material. <laughs> no. This is a song about spies. It's true. It's about the Orient Express. That's that train you used to read about. It's a load of rubbish. It's all jammed with spies. There's no room for passengers at all, you know. They all sit looking at each other. Wonder where he's going. <laughs> Wonder if his bow ties are tape recorder. <laughs> mm. That guy's fiddling about in his pocket. <laughs> I hope that's a tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, <laughs> it's a very fast moving, high energy song. It's a very dirty song, incidentally. <laughs> cover, the, cover the Wayne's ears. It was on the Orient Express, sat a maiden, young and fair, and a guy. I mean, and a guy. <laughs> no. Oh, you want to get a grip, sweetie? Thank God. What are you drinking in that dressing room? Honest, it was tea. Liar. <laughs> Start again. Just to show you I can do it right. I had to come out at half time to have a look at this hall. At the end, at the end of the last show this evening, I was going, thank you very much, good night, and good night. There's nobody there. <laughs> This. These entertainers, they take drugs. They can see people all up there. <laughs> M that wears an earring takes drugs. <laughs> Wait a minute, I get in my position again. Did <laughs> you ever see that at the gang show when they're all lined up to sing? <laughs> the wee shiny faces. I'll tell you, see, talking about shiny, I was in Leeds last week and nobody asked me to be on Stars on Sunday. I was disgusted. <laughs> Man, know a star or something. <laughs> huh? Their feet like get struck with lightning. That's what's up with them. <laughs> One of these bales of hay. <laughs> <laughs> They're safe with Frank Highfield, eh? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> He's something else, isn't he? I remember you. Just as well, I'd nearly forgotten you. <laughs> He's like a Butlin's red coat, isn't he? These happy Australians, they really getting my tits. <laughs> Hello, I'm Australian and I like meeting people. Get to. <laughs> right. Better get back on the subject again. What were we saying? Aye, these. I love stars on Sunday. I'm sure, you know, they sit in that couch, like. Wilfred Pickles and his wife. But, but I've seen the hand coming over the back of the couch and up the jumper, like. <laughs> really, they've been dead for about 15 years, they two. You can see the strings going up. I'd like to read the letter from a woman. <laughs> then they said they'd bring on a Welsh choir. Right, there's about 300 shiny faces. All these white collars, these shiny faces, the blazers. The conductor, you think you're going to get a, a, a Welsh song or something? You go, to make a call, I don't care. To make a call, what the hell's that all about? 
mas estou escalando um pouco. Já 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 já. They're the same, the show's done in a cheap. It's a mirror, there's only one guy and it's a lot of hell. It's true! I would never dream of opening my mouth that wide, would you? I'd be feeling the tap of my head would fall down the back. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Stars and Sunday, oh cray. Sorry man, I didn't mean to drop the name there. <laughs> oh no, you know when you do a thing like that. <laughs> What's this? Uh, why, this is my spy song. I don't like doing two shows a night, it puts me off. I hate coming on knackered trying to look fresh. You know, tired. <laughs> It's a dreadful pain in the arse. <laughs> Don't let them kid you about show business. It's a lot of crap. <laughs> Standing here drinking chrome cleaner, trying to get on. I'm happy. <laughs> Wait. Once it was finished, we could all get buried. <laughs> <laughs> Swear at traffic wardens and that. Right. Here we go. Spies. These trains are really weird. Like you know, the spies are sitting. One of them gets up to go to the lavvy and they all follow him. <laughs> well, listen, with tumblers at the door. What's he saying? I don't know. It sounds like. Do you think it's a code? Aye. I think that's a letter P. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of interference here. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the Orient Express Sat a maiden, young and fair And a guy sat down beside her And began to stroke her hair Her eyes were filled with panic As she turned her pretty head And he kissed her on the ruby lips And this is what he said no need to panic, no need to cry I'm an undercover agent working for the FBI Well the maiden weakened visibly As to him she did say Well if you are with the FBI Then I guess that that's okay He threw his trousers to the floor He's an awful fast worker this guy, you know that <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Did you know my auntie kissed me first then? <laughs> Did you want to see my willy or something? <laughs> Get the silver tongue devil. Uh, might have taken a wee cracker. <laughs> <laughs> he threw his waistcoat and his tie and his shirt and his tie pin and his liberty bodice to the floor. He threw his trousers to the floor and the sweat ran down his face. She said, oh gosh, how can I ever live through this disgrace? He said, shut your pretty mouth, my dear. I will show you how. I've been doing this to the States for years and your turn's coming now. No need to panic, no need to cry. I'm an undercover agent working for the FBI. He put his arm around her waist and he loosened off her belt And words could not describe the fear and loathing that she felt But the poor guy nearly fainted as to him she did say Hey, my name is Fritz, these are not real tits, I'm with the CIA! <laughs> Working for the FBI. No, there's no need to panic. No need to cry. I'm an undercover agent. Working for the FBI. Don't get a little out of
I'm tired telling Irish jokes. I don't think it's very nice. Although the Irish tell Irish jokes, they tell Kerry jokes. You know, they tell jokes about guys for the country. So you can feel quite, you're not really a racialist because you tell Irish jokes. But there was these two Laplanders. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the crossword in the newspaper, you know. And one says to the other, hey, Michael. He says, uh, I've got an awful difficult one here. He says, what is it? Four letters. Old MacDonald had one. She says, God, that's a difficult one right enough, eh? Is she saying, I've got it. Farm. Of course, of course, farm. She says, how do you spell that? He says, I think it's E-I-E-I-O. Two Laplanders swimming in the nude. Swim, swim. And a lot of women walk past, and one says to the other, eh, I bet you're afraid to show them your nuts. This is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty beasts! Thinking the wrong things! Stop laughing, please. God, I'm glad I hired you. <laughs> it's an Edinburgh agency you get them for. Aye, rent a laugh. How many do you want for? Do you want a loony? I've got a great loony. <laughs> do you know, it just gives a chuckle, that'll do. <laughs> Chuckling and two smilers, I were economising in these hard times. I've been a loony all my life. Um, is it the maths lesson at our school? He used to send me out to Kunta Railings. It's true. Aye. We could have learned to. I was breastfed till I was 17. That's true. Uh, my mum used to come up and squeeze it through the school railing. I had two lanes doing my forehead. Huh? Uh, I'm good disqualified for enjoying myself. <laughs> a Vaseline salesman came to town. Don't worry about this, it's not as bad as it sounds. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Now, a Vaseline salesman came to town one day and had some free samples which he gave out and then they went away again. They came back about a year later and knocked to the first door. Said, uh, excuse me, please, uh, I'm the Vaseline. Oh, I remember you, the guy says. You're the Vaseline salesman, aren't you? He said, yeah, that's right. Thanks very much for that wee sample. Come in very handy. He says, oh, you used it? He said, I didn't have. It's fantastic. He says, to what purpose did you put it? He says, I used it for mechanical purposes. I was greasing my car and I ran out of grease and I just remembered your wee sample. No problem. Thanks very much. He says, Here, give us a couple of tins in case of emergency. He says, oh, great. Up to the next door. Excuse me, you might not remember me. I remember you. You're the Vaseline salesman, aren't you? Oh, that's right. Did you use my sample? Certainly did. To what purpose? I used it for medical purposes, says the guy. <laughs> How would you manage that? He said. He says, well, my boy was coming down that hill over there on his bike. He fell off, skinned all his knee, and we hadn't any ointment in the house. I thought, Vaseline. Cleaned it up, we rubbed with the Vaseline. Perfect. Here, give us a couple of tins in case of emergencies. Certainly. So he goes up to the third door. It's always the third guy. <laughs> He's lurking behind the door. <laughs> 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 Eat the bully. <laughs> 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 He's one of these guys that doesn't mind scratching his bum in public. Right, scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you must, it must have happened to you. I, I reckon it's happened to everybody in the world at one point. You're on a busy street. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of people. And your arse gets at you. <laughs> right, now, I don't mean the cheeks. I mean, we in there. Right. Oh, 
You're frightened to scratch it because these hundreds are watching you. It's oh, no! And you'll try anything. Try walking really funny. <laughs> Trying to get the cheeks of your ass to rub like <laughs> it. It doesn't work. You walk my door. I found myself in dark doorways. Oh. In elevators, just trying to be alone. Oh. And do you know, as far as I'm concerned, the solution to the whole thing is own up. When it happens to you, say in a proud, happy voice, My God! My ass is incredibly itchy! I think I will scratch it! And everybody will look away. <laughs> but to get back to get back to this third guy, he's behind the door waiting for his Vaseline filled. The guy knocks the door and he can hear this noise inside the house. Will you shut your damn mouth? Oh, oh, Daddy, who has it? Shut your face! All these kids making a hell of a noise. Well, shut up, get in that damn room! <laughs> and he opens the door a little and sticks his head out, and there's wee heads looking at him. Get back! It's a man! Shut up! <laughs> so the guy's at the door going, well, wait a minute. Here, you, uh, I'm the vast. I remember you were a Vaseline salesman, and thank you very much. Best night I've had in my life. He says, oh, did you use my sample? He says, I certainly did. He says, to what purpose did you put it? I used it for sexual purposes. What a night, you're a beauty. He says, how do you manage that? He says, I smeared it in the handle of the bedroom door and these buggers couldn't get in. <laughs> I'll see you after the show. If you're not there, I'll start myself. <laughs> eh? The guy goes up to an hotel. It's called the Homosexual Arms. He goes in and says to the barman, eh, how come that hotel's called that? He says, I don't know, we don't ask the wife. Hey, Harry! This is a touching ballad. Just a second to get my fingy pickies on straight. <laughs> God almighty, if you like that, then you're going to get the kiss of life at the end. Because <laughs> I get so funny as this thing goes on, I just make them laugh and laugh. Oh, I remember it. <laughs> Rodney met Cynthia at a cocktail party. He said, Cynthia, I haven't seen you in ages and ages. Where have you been, darling? So, Rodney, long time now, see? Hmm? I've, I've been in the colonies, you know, and since the breakup of the family. So, take it easy, darling. I, I, I didn't mean to, to ask you things like that. Can I get you a drink or something? A sherry or a port or something? No, thank you. <laughs> sherry reminds me of the fields of waving corn, and chestnuts roasting on the fire before the family broke up. <laughs> and anyway, port makes me fart. It's a stutter, isn't it? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> it's infirmaline. Sounds like ointment, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rub in some infirmaline. <laughs> That'll cure them. <laughs> 
or kill him? It was the 4th of September, I believe. I married Cynthia and the, the rain was pouring down and, and I thought, how rotten for Cynthia. And come to think of it, how rotten for me too. Then the, the letter came through the post. I'd been posted to India and I thought, oh God, how rotten for Cynthia. How rotten for me. The ship was seven days at sea and we struck a reef. And I thought, oh God, how rotten for Cynthia. Come to think of it, how rotten for me. However, we were washed ashore and a tribe of savages came charging up the beach and I thought, oh God, how rotten for Cynthia. And come to think of it, how rotten for me. No sooner had they arrived in front of us than the biggest and strongest proceeded to bugger us all. And I thought, how rotten for Cynthia. Mind you, it wasn't it too bad for me. <laughs> play a tune of my banjo. It's a tune I learned ages ago and I, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> hey, Avon! <laughs> hey, knock knock. Avon, your bell's knack up. <laughs> I always wanted to see a big hard case selling Avon, one of them big Glasgow women, you know. <laughs> Six feet between the eyes. Why don't any aftershaves smelly? <laughs> we sell a great deodorant, it's called invisible. You spray it on and you disappear and everybody wonders where the smell's coming from. <laughs> True! <laughs> I love it. I'm going to play my banjo now. Cause just because I want to. That's kind of bloke I am, I just go and do things like that. This is a tune I learned ages ago. It's called Grandfather's Clock. <laughs> it is, no joke. <laughs> there, hi. <laughs> Just get out of shape here. Just come on you. Right. All day. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> ready, steady, ready, steady. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, man, right, right, right. Give me the way, right. One, two, one, two, three. Start again, start again, start again. Ouch, it's bags of time, it's bags of time. Can do extra time at the end.
This is my favourite tune. It's kind of gimmicky, really, but I like it. That's all right. <clears throat> it's called There's No Place Like Home. And the more I play Banff, the more I believe it. <laughs> oh, it's really a nice place. You know, Banff has the local football team's called Dever and Vale. Not as wee Banffies, I'll go do it again. Or the wee Banff boys. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? D, E, V, O, D. Banff! Banff! <laughs> and the next tune's called Macduff. And they've got trouble as well with their wee team. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? M, small C, capital D. Ah, we can support Banff and all. Ah, oh, you don't like two shows, do you, pal? Just you keep it heat, it'll not be long now. This is your last number, except the last one. I think we'll chuck it, I think we're bored the arse after now, eh? <laughs> it's getting worse. Want a wee rest? Ah, oh, alright. Sit there and I'll kick the shit out of you later. Right? Here we go. This is a. <laughs> this is a cunning little number. Thank you. This is a, a, a lullaby. And it's. Uh... No, really, it's a lullaby from, from Partick. See, Partick's such a noisy place, the kids can't get to sleep unless you make a noise at night time, you know? You go, GO SLEEP! <laughs> GO TO SLEEP, MY BABY! You can tell he's wearing tights, when he farts, his ankles swell. <laughs> Put on your stainless steel wellies, baby! With a chanty on your head! Ah, they don't write words like that anymore. Put on your stainless steel wellies, baby! With a chanty on your head! That's what I call potted heat. <laughs> ah, when you walk down Sucky Hall Street! Ah, Jesus Christ, you're gonna knock him dead! Ah, you know I love you, baby. You know I ain't too proud to beg. Tap you, don't you? Ah, you know I love you, baby. You know I ain't too proud to beg. Oh, I don't know why you left me. I didn't mean to break your leg. You know I read Kama Sutra. You know I dyed my nipples black. Oh, I felt that you need your neck, I don't you know I read Kama Sutra. You know I dyed my nipples black. Just seen the mess of my liberty bodice. And when I crawled into your bedroom, you know you were snoring on your back. I didn't mind your fair oil balaclava or your bowler hat with sleeves. I really didn't mind your fair oil balaclava, the open neck flannels and the three button sand shoes. Or your bowler hat with sleeves. Ah, but when you turned up in stilts, honey, that was just too much for me. Put on your barbed wire knickers, honey, with your cement front to back. Put on your barbed wire knickers, baby, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. with your cement front to back. Want to kiss St. Michael? Oh, when you come back to party, ah, oh, you're going to cut your white.
Carnegie Hall, eh? He was a Scotsman, you know. They were all starving out there and they gave them libraries as a present. <laughs> That's a fact. What a bore. They're all freezing. They were tying the books to their feet. No shoes. This is... <laughs> it's true. Right. It was with a great sense of relief that I discovered in the southern states of this country that farm labourers are called shit kickers. Because <laughs> I had used that terrible word in my act several times and it was great to just relax and say it. Everybody was saying, shit, ah, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> ah, shit, 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 shit. But it kind of confused me. I didn't know it was a farm labourer. And when I heard that guy being described as a shit kicker, I imagined a guy going about the streets looking for shit to kick. <laughs> oh, there's one. Keep it up, eh, with shit. <laughs> see, um, you see any good shits, man? Yeah, there's one round the corner there. It's a beauty. Yeah, but I back heeled it up a street, you know? But this, is... <laughs> but this song has a chorus I would like you to join in. It's just great to hear hundreds of people saying shit. All at once. <laughs> Get in there before the critics. You all right? I get up bright and early every morning Just at the break of the day And I wander down to the barnyard I do the milking and I feed the cow's hay I don't do so much in the evening Till Friday night it rolls along Then I have a beer in the tavern And sometimes I sing them this song Doing the shit kickers walls Doing the shit kickers walls It don't mean a hoot if there's on your boots When you're doing the shit kickers walls Try it! Doing the shit kickers walls. Doing say walls. He hinted, it don't mean a hoot if there's on your boots when you're doing the shit kickers walls. Well, one night a young fella heard me. He said, I will make you a star. So I made a record in Nashville. You know my record went straight in them charts He said we must get you some clothes now Leather pants and a fancy gold shirt I said my overalls suit me dandy If you'll spray some perfume on the dirt When I'm doing the shit kicker's walls Sing! Doing the shit kicker's walls it don't mean a hoot if there's shit on your boots when you're doing. Okay. That's the game. Come on, get your teeth into it. <laughs> well, that fell up and he left me. But I didn't mind anyhow. Then I thought I would try out my record. Just myself and a whole bunch of cows Well, I'm damned if the cows didn't like it Standing out there in the field But I got a shot the next morning When I found they had doubled their yield They've been doing the shit kicker's walls Doing the shit kicker's walls it don't mean a hoot if there's on your boots when you're doing the sh Last time, last time, last time. Doing the shit kickers walls. Come on! Do it. Oh, It don't mean a hoot if there's on your boots when you're doing the shit kickers walls. This song is a... Uh...
has nothing to do with Glen Campbell. Absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, where I come from, Glen Campbell's a place. So, <laughs> and, uh, that's true. I don't live in Mary Hill. I suppose Cruffy people live. I'm a tough. Ah, it's close enough for Carnegie Hall, isn't it? <laughs> We've got one as well. Carnegie Hall in Fernland. Ah, it's like an air raid shelter. You go, you see it. <laughs> yeah. The mice wear overalls in there. It really is a hell of a haul. You sort of clean your feet on the way out. I played it last week. It's a crazy place. See how I don't look sometimes? Yeah. Clever that, isn't it? Watch this. I can do it in one leg. One leg, eyes shut. Oh, there's no stopping this guy. Uh, where's Jimmy Page now? That's what I want to know. Yeah. I'm a half stoned cowboy who fell on his ass in the middle of the rodeo. Just a half stoned cowboy. Buying beer and whiskey for people I don't even know. Then I wonder where my money goes. I was having a drink alone when someone called me to the phone. He was making a joke about trouble that was coming my way. It was my wife saying, What's your game? You know you ought to be a bloody shame the way you carry on. You've got a load of children starving and a jungle that once was a garden and you're off like a shot every night as far as I can see. Like a half stoned cowboy who fell off on his ass in the middle of the rodeo Just a half stoned cowboy Buying beer and whiskey for people you don't even know Then you wonder where your money goes She says, I think I'm gonna go insane The kitchen's got a blocked up drain the baby's got a stomach pain and he won't stop his crying But I know what I'm gonna do When I get you home I'm gonna kick the p*** out of you <laughs> Oh woe oh, to the guy who boozes He's gonna be a mass of bruises Cause I'm gonna break your back when I get you home You're just a half stoned cowboy Who fell off on his ass in the middle of the rodeo Just a half stoned cowboy Buying hash and acid for people you don't even know Then you wonder where your money goes Hope you know. Glasgow line I'm most terrified of. You call me a liar, pal. Ooh. I remember it from my childhood, all these heavies. 
with the high forehead and a big stick with a nail in it. Me or you? When people say you were brought up in Glasgow, Mr. Connolly, and wasn't there a, a in tenement life, wasn't there a, a great sense of community? <laughs> See, aye. When they're 65 of you sharing the toilet, <laughs> it kind of breeds a sense of community, you know. You, you never get a cold seat for a start. <laughs> right. guy goes into the optician. It's a toilet, no man. It's a time of year in my petition and that. He says, I am not a petition. And I've been working all day and it's six o'clock. What the hell are you doing in here at this time of night? He says, I want to, my eyes test it. No, I think I need the Gregory's. No, Gregory Peck's back in that. No. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. The eyes, no, no, I want the glasses, no. He says, look, I've got, oh, to hell. He says, look, stand in that line over there. Cover your left eye with your right hand and read the cards, will you? And I'll take some dirty. For God's sake, he said, it's simple enough. You stand in the red line there. Cover your left eye with your right hand and read the card on the wall. He turns in the guy, he's got about with his hands like that. He says, oh, for God's sake. Oh, here, wait a minute. And he goes in the back room and comes out with a cornflakes box. And he cuts a hole at the left eye and puts it over his head. He says, right, read the card, will you? And the wee guy starts to greet inside the box. <laughs> He said, what's wrong with you now? He says, I wanted the wee rune ones like John Lennon. (laughs) 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 Imagine him turning up at a party with a box in the head. Change it to another box, that's my reading one. <laughs> a black box for the evening wear. Well. Hey, what was I going to do? Oh, I remember. I'll tell you a wee joke. And uh, you can laugh if you like, but it's not going to be in the record. They've never put this in the record. <laughs> There's a sweary word in it. I'll warn you. Right. So the, a body is found in a church. And the police come up. Uh, could you get the man who knows uh, how it happened, the fellow who found the body? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the policeman's official tone. Yes, I'd like to inquire as to who found the body. LAUGHTER <laughs> Uh, and they said, oh, it's the hall keeper, I'll just get him. And the hall keeper comes out, he's a right scruff. Hey, hello, what's that? Uh, what seems to be the soapy bubble and that trouble, you know what I mean? He says, the police says, uh, are you the fellow who fund the cadaver? He says, oh, well, I am partly. He says, what do you mean, partly? He says, well, it was alive the first time I saw it. <laughs> and then it was dead. He says, could you explain that? He says, well, he says, I've got a theory about this fella dying, he says. Because I walked into the church and I saw him, he was up in the altar and he was reading the Bible. And I said, hey, what the fuck are you doing there? <laughs> and he collapsed and died. And you know something? I think he thought that was the voice of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stutter, isn't it? We're going to talk about death. Just to cheer you up, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dead. And as Scots have a peculiar idea of death and funerals, isn't it? as a matter of fact, there's an old saying. There's more fun at a Glasgow funeral than there is at an Edinburgh wedding. <laughs> and it's... <laughs> and the, I, I largely hold this to be true. You know, especially after the, the, the guy or, or the woman is buried in a way, or burnt and that. The... Not burnt, cremated. <laughs> disposed of. 
you get of him in a salt cellar, you know. But the, but the, but the party afterwards, great. It's funny. They're all mourning at first. Terrible. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, here, have a large one for a start. We'll see what happens. At the end, they've forgotten who it was. You know, they're all dying. Yeah, well. See, death has always fascinated me. My own, in particular. <laughs> Not so much the process of dying. I always wondered where I was going to be when it happened, you know. You, I mean, you can get really caught if you die in the wrong place, can't you? <laughs> can't you say it wasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to say the bit of stuff. See if I die in here, will you put my trousers on and throw me out the window? <laughs> <laughs> Write a suicide note for me to throw me out the window. <laughs> but this death thing, and especially cremation, being burny wernied I don't fancy that much. I used to think it, well, I went to a funeral once, a, a, a burying one, and, uh, and I thought, my God, what a terrible thing to do to people. It looks horrendous when you're really at one, you know. And then, eh, right after that, I went to a uh, cremation. Somebody else had died and I went away up. And eh, now that, was, that intrigued me because they put the coffin on a plinth thing. And the minister was over on the other side. And I, was, I, I had no idea. I'd never been to one before, you know. And I was watching the coffin. And I said, I wonder what happens to it. I mean, surely God did not set fire to it right in front of you, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> So he's sitting there on this thing, and the minister says, Well, we'll have some prayers now. Let us pray. O oh God, who is high in heaven, take our friend into your hands and show him. And I look back, there's a way. I said, Oh, come on, what happened? And I was feared to ask everybody. I didn't want to appear naive. But obviously, it went into this thing down to the vaults below. So I thought, I felt a bit cheated. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and eventually somebody else died. And I went... <laughs> <laughs> and I went up to that crematorium. I said, right, I'm going to watch this time. So I'm watching both of them. So I'm not going to be conned with this prayers bit into looking away. And this was a different kind. The coffin didn't go down. It went along a ramp thing, you know, like, a, like in a factory. So it's sitting there, and I'm watching both of them. Let us pray. I said, right, here we go. <laughs> oh, God, who's high in heaven, please take our dearly beloved and make a home for him in your heavenly <laughs> I thought, you wee hypocrite. He didn't even look at the button. Just like, uh, boom, right, oh, expert. He's done about 14 that day, you see. And away it went, and I went through a curtain. The curtain shut. I was listening. Nothing. And I was expecting a wee man to come through the curtain and go, you got a match? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you see, the, and the whole thing was quite horrific. And it was raining outside, and I come out feeling lousy. Oh, what? And I think they could do a lot to cheer the place up. I mean, they're supposed to believe the guy's gone to heaven, aren't they? I mean, surely they should be quite happy about that. But no, it's all weary, Willie. You know, we him eat sausage rolls that you don't even like. <laughs> They could do a poster campaign. Come on in, folks! You know, come and see Elizabeth Fry! You know, we've got a humour injected in here. Come on in and watch Robert Browning! You know, come and see Captain Cook. Come and watch how Robbie burns! You know, cheer it up. 
<laughs> this is a song about it. Just to cheer it up a bit, because you're all going, baby. Just to cheer you up. We're all going. <laughs> no, no! No, no! You're not getting me. <laughs> no, I'm going to be. I'm, see if I'm ever sick like that, I'm going to get 20 sticks of dynamite under me. <laughs> and they're not getting their hands on me in these places. No way. He's <laughs> 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 we undertakers. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> When you pass the crematorium Just remember this Your time is sure to come And when you see that smoke Go curling up the lawn There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight A healing man called Jordy McIntyre Had a heart attack And Julie did expire Now his friends are attending the muck in the Geordie's pyre There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight A chip shop owner left this world of light His friends and his relatives They really got a fright When they read the sign Saying Tony's frying tonight There'll be a hot time in the old town Relatives come from near and from far Though we have nae got a cafe or a bar But we promise each one a nice wee pot of char There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight Though we have nae got an organ or a choir For the price of a dollar you can hire A band that'll sing Come on baby, light my fire There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight So when you pass the crematorium Just remember this Your time is sure to come And when you see that smoke Go curling up the lump There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight Thank you very much. Thank you. A wee fellow in Glasgow walked into a bar. He said, Day, whose is the great Dane outside the door? The bloke said, It's mine. Oh. He says, My dog just killed it. <laughs> he says, What kind of dog have you got? He says, A chihuahua. He says, how did it manage to kill a great day? And he says, I think it's stuck in its throat. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the doctor. He says, uh, doctor, I'll come straight to the point. I won't beat about the bush. I'll come straight to the point in a very matter-of-fact fashion. The fact, the point of the matter is, I'm going deaf. So we Japanese doctor. He said, when did this start to happen? <laughs> In a Japanese accent. He said, oh, about a year ago it was uh, started, yes. And it's got steadily worse and worse than that. He said, oh, take out your worry. He says, what? Take out your worry. <laughs> Place it on a table. Oh, come on. Look <laughs> at my wallet. Look at my wallet. 
I don't listen with my wallet. I don't go, hello, what's that? I had the phone, like, hello. <laughs> Never arrest. <laughs> Never arrest. Take out your worry and praise it to our table. So <laughs> well, ain't it please you? If he's willing to the table, he's a bit embarrassed, you know. <laughs> Looking out the window. And the guy came screaming across the room, leapt into the, the air and went, ah, stop! And the wax went, boom! Bloody liberty, isn't it? I'll just get into tune, which will be pretty original for me. <laughs> Playing a day. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Did you ever see that book? It's a guitar tutor. Playing a day by Bert Whedon. <laughs> I believed it too. Teaches you all on songs like My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. <laughs> Nobody wants you to come to their parties because that's the only song you know. <laughs> My Bonnie Lies, get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> we shall overcome. <laughs> if it was not for your welly swear, would you be? You'd be in the hospital or infirmary. For you would have a dose of the flu or even blue the sea If you didn't have your feet in your wellies oh, Wellies, they are wonderful oh, Wellies, they are swell Cause they keep out the water And they keep in the smell And when you're sitting in a room You can always tell When somebody takes off these wellies If the was sniff on your wellies Where would you say You'd be in the hot oh, Oh, but you would have a dose of the flu or even If you didn't have your feet Oh, British politicians, they haven't made a hit They're ruining the country more than just a bit If they keep on the way they're gone, we'll all be in the jobbies So you better get your feet in your wellies If it was not for your well You'd be in the hospital or infirmary For you would have a dose of the flu or even pleurisy If you didn't have your feet in your wellies If it was not for your wellies Where would you be? You would be in the hospital <laughs> Or the infirmary or Or if you would have a dose of the flu, or even a blue I see. If it you was not for your feet, in your way, leave. Thank you very much. It's been rather splendid for us playing for you. Thank you. Thanks very much. It's been rather super playing for you. I need you all. I know I must say it's the best laxative I've ever known in my life. Good night. Thank you very much.